he went down to Egypt and dwelt there. Now, Egypt for us would be the world, the world system, all right? And you know that God has delivered us out of the world system. Now, some Christians still participate in the world system, especially with their money. They still gamble, play the lottery, things like that, okay? But I'm telling you, that's the game of chance. You don't win if you, if you, if you join God's system, all right? All right. Verse 5 again says, and you shall answer. And you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a Syrian about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there. Few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Verse 6, But the Egyptians mistreated us, afflicted us, and laid hard bondage on us. And that's what the world does. The world puts you in bondage. The world causes you to be in prison. And, and, and the reason why is Satan is the God of the, of the world's morals. So anything dealing with the world is designed to push us, push us away from God. But God has freed us. If you want a scripture for that, you can read Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, where it says that we've been given promises so that we can escape the corruption that's in the world. That's right. And the promises are the promises of God in His Word. Amen? Amen. All right, verse 7. It says, Then we cried out to the Lord God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the world, with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And through Christ, we have that abundance now. We're in that promised land. We're in a land right now flowing with milk and honey. But it's up to you and I to take advantage of that. It's up to you and I to appropriate it for ourselves. Amen. God is not going to just drop it in your lap. There's some things that you have to do. You have to participate in by faith. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Are, are y'all all right with that? Amen. I'm not speaking words now, okay? Speaking faith. All right. Uh, verse 9, verse 10. It says, And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship, see that? Before the Lord your God. You shall worship with your tithe. They brought the tithe. Now, it, it talks about... Uh, weed and stuff like that because during those days they were farmers so their tithe was from the farmland. Matter of fact, the Pentecostal, Pentecostal, the word Pentecostal, that, that, that particular feast, it has uh, three different names for it. The first one was the first, uh, well, was the, uh, the first week, the first week of, of, of harvest. Mm -hmm. The second one was the uh, first of the harvest uh, fruit of the harvest, and the third was the first day of the fruit of the harvest, something like that. But in a way, what it was, they would take, when they, at the end of the year, when they got all their harvest, they would bring the Lord the first part, the first yeah. tithe. Right. And they would worship God with that and thank Him so that the rest of their tithe, or the rest of their harvest, would be blessed. That's and that's what we do. When we give 10% of what we have, we thank God for blessing the 90%. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a 90% blessed yeah. than a 100% without God's blessing. Right. Right. Okay? Yeah. And that's what happens when you don't tie the 10%. The 10 you're not putting it out there for the enemy to take it. Now, people used to teach you go to hell for that, but you don't. You know, you're, as a matter of fact, you, you're not under a curse for that. All you're doing is putting it in the world system and, and, and taking a chance with it. Y'all okay with that? Yeah, I don't want y'all <laughs> Verse 11. So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house, you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. Do you thank God for what you have? Do you thank, you know, a lot of us walk around and complain about what we don't have, but we need to thank God for what we do have. Because as long as you're complaining about what you don't have, you won't see any increase. Because you're murmuring, you're worried. You know what? That's what destroyed them in the, in the, in the wilderness. They're murmuring and complaining. And all murmuring shows is that you're not really trusting God. 
Because yeah. if you really trust God, no matter what comes your way, you know that you have the victory. Amen. Yeah. It's a um, pastor that I used to be up under. He would say, I will not quit, therefore I cannot be defeated. You know, you can't, the only way you're defeated is you stop. So the victory is already won. That's right. You understand? So no matter what you face is financially, physically, or whatever, we already have the victory for it. Amen? Amen. All right, verse 12. It says, when you have finished laying aside all the tithes of your increase in the third year, the, and the third year during that time, the third year of tithes is dedicated to the, they would bring it to a certain town, a certain part of the town, and it was dedicated to help people to help the strangers, to help feed folks. And that's what tithes do today. Your tithes coming to the church is dedicated to help the people out there. And you keep it meeting God's storehouse. So when people come to the storehouse, they can be helped. That's right. Okay? All right. It says, uh, verse 12 again, it says, when you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithing, and have given it to the Levites, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows, so that they may eat within your gate and be filled, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed I, I have removed the holy tithe from my house, and also have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed your commandments, nor have I gotten forgotten them. Yes. Verse fourteen. I have not eaten any of it. How many of you have eaten up your tithe? <laughs> Seed. You take it, it's seed, that's right. You, you see, you take it, and you know that it's supposed to be set aside for God, but you say, you know what, I see this new dress at the mall. Uh-oh. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh, I see, oh, I need these <laughs> shoes. Uh-oh. And this will get it from the right hand. So see, you eating up your tablet. He says, I have not eaten, <laughs> have not eaten any of it when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use.